Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, guys. Celtic Warband here, and thanks for tuning in to another battle in Napoleon Total War. In today's battle, we find ourselves embroiled in the bloody conflict known as the Peninsular War. Napoleon and his troops had occupied much of the Iberian Peninsula, but the Spaniards were fighting back. Aided by forces from Portugal, the combined armies managed to cut off a small section of Napoleon's main force, trapping it on a hilltop. The French forces had no hope of reinforcements or escape. It was either fight or die. The first attacking army on the battlefield today is Spain, commanded by myself. And in the front lines, I have eight units of Fusiliers as my main body or main line infantry. And then behind that, I have my more elite infantry. So I have two units of the Walloon Guard. That's the best Spanish infantry that I can field in the base game Napoleon Total War. I've also got two units of light infantry here as well in the center. And over on this flank, I have two units of grenadiers. I have four units of cavalry. I have two units of lanceros on this flank. I've got two units of corceros espanol, I think is how you pronounce them. So that totals four. And then I was able to bring one artillery piece. So I have a six pounder horse artillery. And then, of course, I have my general's bodyguard, Gregorio Garcia de la Cuesta. I hope is how you pronounce that. I think that's pretty well close to the pronunciation. But for any of the Spanish uh, viewers, feel free to correct any of my pronunciation down in the comments below. But a pretty solid army for Spain. A lot of heavy infantry and a lot of good cavalry as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at my ally. The next attacking army on the battlefield today and aiding Spain and driving out the Napoleonic invaders is Portugal, commanded by Azrian Fox. And in the front lines, he has three units of militia, so just some basic infantry units in the front lines. Behind that, he has four units of infantry, standard staple infantry in Portugal's roster. And behind that, he has two units of the Cazadores. I think these are the best units that Portugal can field. Behind that, we have three units of Grenadiers. Very sweet uniforms for these Grenadiers as well. I really, really like them. Love the deep blue on their uniforms. Very, very cool. Behind that, we have the General himself, Luis Dorego Barreto. Or Barreto. And right at the back, we've got three units of Tiradores. So I believe this is a light or skirmish infantry. And then on the flanks, he does have some cavalry. He has uh, two units of the Portuguese cavalry on this flank. And on this flank, he has a third Portuguese cavalry and also a 12-pounder foot artillery piece. So a very heavy gun brought by the Portuguese army. And that rounds out the attacking forces. So let's go ahead and take a look at the defender. Trapped upon the hilltop and cut off from the rest of Napoleon's army is France, commanded by DeVos11111. And as I said in the introduction, this is nowhere near the full might of the Napoleonic forces in the Iberian Peninsula. So with that in mind, obviously Napoleon would not be present on this battlefield, but we just have a basic general staff. But we do have a lot of very solid staple French infantry on the battlefield. And of course, he DeVos, he does have a very good position atop of this rocky outcrop here. A lot of his units may still be hidden in the trees, but we'll go ahead and take a look at what is visible. So he does have a couple units of chasse. He also has uh, one or two units of basic militia. He has two or three units of young guard. We've got the 18th regi uh, regiment de l'infanterie de l'Inde de Brave. <laughs> Probably not how you pronounce it, but I did give it my best shot there. There's another unit of Chasse. He did have a couple units of Polish Legion. Yes, there they are, two units of them. And he was allowed to bring two artillery pieces because this is a 2v1. So he has two of the six-inch howitzers. Very, very good artillery. And with that commanding view of the battlefield, he should be able to use those howitzers to a pretty good effect. He also had a unit of light infantry here, the Voltsige, defending with stakes on this area of the battlefield. But the rest of his infantry is just forming up here. He did have a couple units of cavalry, but the only one that is visible at the moment is the Garde Chasse à Cheval. And that rounds out the French forces trapped upon the hilltop. So let's go ahead and get to the battle. All 
Alright guys, welcome to the battlefield, and as you can see, we have the very large Portuguese army slowly advancing upon the French positions, and there are a lot of Portuguese soldiers on the battlefield. If we zoom out, you can see that Azrian Fox is sending the full might of his Portuguese infantry up against only two units of Chasse and two units of Polish Legion. However, we do have that six-inch howitzer over here that is pummeling the Portuguese lines as they try to ascend this hilltop and look at the climb that they actually have to make all the while being under fire by the French in their superior positioning. Come on Portugal, you can do this. Break the French here and Napoleon might be forced to withdraw and as I say that very big hits on the infantry and the militia over here on this left hand side. The poor militia really struggling to actually get into range of the Chasse à Chevelle. Looks like Azrian with his artillery is returning fire up onto the guard seamen there that are defending with the old guard and the 6th regiment against my force which I'm holding in reserve. But look at the poor militia finally actually getting into range and they are so depleted at this point. They've been taking fire for so long. The French just had the better positioning and the better range. And of course the militia, I think Azrian Fox is happy to throw the three units of militia away because they're not a very valuable unit and just try and save uh, his infantry from being fired upon until they are able to get into position. And as I say, that looks like Azrian is moving forwards with his infantry, but already the amount of musket fire and artillery fire in this small valley here has created quite a bit of smoke from the gunpowder uh, from the gunpowder residue. Look at the perfect volleying here too from DeBoss one 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 one. He's actually got a unit of Polish Legion just up there on the hilltop. The uh, elite infantry for Portugal are already pretty banged up as they get into position to fire. We've got some of the militia up here. Uh, DeBoss actually holding his militia back because he knows that the morale of the militia isn't very good. So he'd rather have his militia be able to fire but not being focused down by the Portuguese infantry. We do have some of the Portuguese cavalry over on this flank here. I think that Azrin was hoping he would be able to ride around and flank this position, but DeBoss has thought of that and he's placed the 18th Regiment, the Brave, and a unit of Young Guard to stop that from happening. But I'd really just like to focus on this for a minute because it is very much a uh, one-dimensional battle. There's not really uh, two different theaters of fighting going on. It's uh, very much just pushing up this one valley here. And if that is the case, the French actually might have a chance at surviving against overwhelming numbers from the combined uh, Spanish-Portuguese alliance here. Already the Portuguese army has taken massive losses trying to climb this hilltop. And the Chasse, I mean, they are taking some losses, but it's definitely in favor of the French right now as we just slowly mouse over this battlefield. And you can just see the amount of damage that the Portuguese army has taken and the amount of dead soldiers for Portugal in this valley. And it looks like Azrian is going to try and regroup. He's sending forwards his two units of Casadores. He also needs to save those Grenadiers as well. The Grenadiers very, very solid in melee, but he also probably wants to use the uh, grenades that they are able to carry, and he won't be able to do that in this type of fighting. He's gonna have to wait until he actually does secure uh, level ground with the French before he is able to do that. Otherwise, he's just going to take way too many losses. Here we go. It looks like he is moving up his Teodores. Maybe the uh, Teodores with their extended range should be able to maybe at least match the French at this point because look at this. Even still, the Casador is moving in. A very good Portuguese unit, but they are just outgunned. Who would have thought in a 2v1 that the French would actually put the Portuguese in a position where they outgun them. A lot of French units now on that hilltop. I believe we have four or five units firing down. Azrian only has two at the moment engaged. It looks like he is trying to push up his Theodores on the flanks, and that is where he is actually going to start crawling back some of his losses here, really hitting hard on those Chasse in the right flank. 
Meanwhile, you can see that the Spanish is slowly moving forwards to his position here. I've got all of my Fusiliers moving in a long line. I've got my Grenadiers here, the Walloom Guards. My main focus was actually with my six-pounder horse artillery was to try and soften the position here that was defended by the Volzige. I've also got my two units of Coraceros Espanol coming over here, but of course the boss, he has noticed that. He's got his old guard over here, which will easily be able to repel my cavalry, especially when they are put into a square formation. And look at this, it's almost like I don't even notice. No excuse for me as well, because I'm not even engaged in battle. I'm just moving my army forwards, and my uh, my uh, Coraceros are just basically walking past the old guard, allowing them to shoot my cavalry to pieces. I don't know what I was doing here, but what a waste of cavalry. Maybe I was trying to go around them, and they're they are not... Oh, they, I guess they are tired, which is unfortunate. But now DeBoss has actually d uh, made a little kill zone here for the cavalry, setting up his guard seamen in a square formation as well. But I did manage to catch the 6th Regiment infantry without them going into square formation. I still think that the boss will be able to get the edge in this fight. He's got the three units there. I believe my, uh, yeah, my Coraceros, that unit has broken from the battlefield. And these two units of Lanceros, I've decided to actually move them around a little bit further instead of just sending them to their deaths like I did with my Coraceros. And there we go. Well done to the boss holding on. Remember, he has to micro on two separate fronts here and against two separate players. So we don't have to micro as, in as intensively as the boss has to. But now, now it looks like the French forces are starting to get quite depleted here. We've got the militia actually in the front lines. Uh, the two units of Chasse are next to nothing now. Uh, basically 50 men between the two units. We've got the Polish Legion kind of moving to uh, spread between them as the Chasse actually break there. And we've got some of the Guard Chasse Chevelle pulling back. And it looks like the boss needs to defend less territory at this point. But Azrian, that is what he was waiting for. He's got his Portuguese cavalry on the move. But the boss, if he can maybe pull across here and uh, kind of cut this hilltop defense in half, he will be able to defend uh, less territory with less men. And he definitely has less men than we do as the attackers. Keep in mind, guys, that the Portuguese are the only ones, really, that have fought to boss so far. My, f my Spanish forces are extremely healthy. Uh, I've lost my cavalry, as I said, but just look at all of these fusiliers that are untouched and ready for battle. Now that the Portuguese have really done the hard work of taking that hilltop, we'll be able to move up it unopposed. And then this is a lot of guns that the French are going to have to contend with. A lot of guns. And not to mention that my Grenadiers and my Walloon Guard are still extremely healthy. I've got uh, my two units of light infantry over here. We're kind of having a little bit of a firefight here with the Volzige. But you can see the Volzige have the better position once again. Uh, it's very hard to see. I'll try and zoom in for you guys. There we go. So that's what we're looking at there. I've got my light infantry firing up through the forest and the Volzige firing down. Very smart of DeBoss as well to put those stakes there because I was considering sending some cavalry up there, but uh, he covered that, so I wasn't able to do that, which is unfortunate uh, for me. But my Lanceros moving around the back, and as you can see, I am actually sneaking them up this little pathway here. However, DeBoss has mostly pulled back. There are a couple of units of the Young Guard and the Brave uh, 18th Regiment. They need to kind of get pulled back because here actually comes the Portuguese cavalry. And I think uh, DeBoss realizes that immediately as the Portuguese cavalry crests that hilltop there that he needs to get these two units out. We've got the uh, Guard Chasse Chevelle moving forwards as well just to defend their retreat. And a banged up unit from the Polish Legion is also pulling back to that tree line. But my Lanceros, they want some blood here. They're... They saw that the Coraceros, their comrades, were cut down mercilessly by the old guard. And my unit of Lanceros is not going to slow down. They're going to charge in. But unfortunately, again, the boss so smart with his micro there, watching every area of the battlefield. The Lanceros having to charge into square. And now they're fighting a young guard unit in melee. 
Azrian Fox seeing this he's going to move his Portuguese cavalry around the flanks I'm going to try and disengage there and just look for another tempting target and I see another tempting target in the 18th regiment the brave and that unit did not get into square formation in time a huge charge there by that cavalry however the Lancero is routing immediately from the fire from the young guard Another unit of Lancero, or sorry, actually, this is the Portuguese cavalry moving in behind. I don't know where they're going to charge in, but he needs to do it quickly because the Portuguese cavalry is under pretty heavy fire from that tree line. And we've also got the old guard coming up here to defend this passage. Another unit of Lanceros moving in, though, however, the old, the young guard, sorry, is pretty content just to sit there in square formation. And if you look through the tree line, we've actually got the guard Chasse Chevelle there. Apologies for the lag. There's a lot going on in the battlefield, but they are they are very close at hand to defend. Come on, let's get the uh, the old guard. And again, DeVos. I did get a bit of a charge on that old guard, but it wasn't enough. They managed to get square formation, and then out of the trees burst the guard Chasse a Chevelle. Easily wiping aside my Lancero cavalry. And just like that, the Spanish uh, the Spanish army has pretty much been reduced to infantry only. But there we go, Guard Chasse Chevelle actually being countercharged by the Portuguese cavalry. Well done there. But with the support of the old guard in square formation, I don't think that they're going to amount to much. You can see them riding through the trees there. But let's actually take stock of what's going on. So as I said, all my units here of Fusiliers are pretty much able to get up this hilltop unmolested except for on uh, this flank here where that that howitzer artillery is just shredding those units you can see the two units on the far left flank albeit we haven't lost uh, really many men there their morale is just shaken as they hear the howitzers crashing overhead but I'm going to form my battle line here. This is pretty much all that's left of the Portuguese army at this point. Uh, the French really did a number on them as they tried to uh, get up this little hill. Again, we can just survey the battlefield and see the amount of dead Portuguese soldiers in this one area to see how much blood they have paid in the defense of the Iberian Peninsula from Napoleon. But now the Spanish Fusiliers have made it, and I love all of the... All of the dirt and dust that they are kicking up just really shows you the sheer amount of men that have made it to the top of the hill. And if I was a Frenchman right now, I would definitely be worried. Take a look at that very thin line of French in that tree line there. Of course, we do have some fresh units with the old guard there, but with the Portuguese there, and then this very large column of Spanish Fusiliers right behind that. Plus, we also have the Walloon Guard and the Grenadiers. It is going to be a very tough fight for the French to hold. And there's really not much more ground that they can give up. If they give up any more ground, uh, they're just going to become sitting ducks. They're going to be packed into too small of a position to really be able to defend properly. And uh, I think DeBoss really wants to hold this little forested area too. It does provide some cover for his infantry and uh, also... There is a little bit of a hilltop all where this forest uh, sits, basically. So it is a bit of a height advantage as well. Let's see how things are going over here. So yes, it looks like he has withdrawn his Votzige. You can see... Where, where did they go? I'm not sure where they went. Or we might have actually broken them. Yeah, I don't remember if I broke them or not. But I do have my two units of light infantry moving up the hilltop here. And DeBoss immediately has to deal with this, sending back his old guard and his guard Chasse Chevelle. Because his six-inch howitzers are actually under threat now. Not only that, having some units in behind means that he is effectively surrounded on this hilltop. So he's definitely going to have to do something. Let's go ahead and move over to this side where you can see that the Spanish Fusiliers are finally in position. And I love the gunfire just opening up like a thunder through the valley. I'm sure the French morale cannot be that good right now. Just hearing the amount of gunfire coming from the other side of the battlefield. But a really good battle line forming here as you can see. If I zoom down over here, you can see that we do have some Portuguese 
mixed in, but that was a huge hit, a direct hit on those Fusiliers, more actually hitting overhead. Surely that is going to break their morale there. That was a very choice hit. I've also got all of my elite infantry moving around the flanks. We've got the two Grenadiers over here. But here we go. This is the this is the Spanish charge, the wave of Fusiliers moving forwards, just moving with sheer numbers and might to try and break the French positions on this hilltop. And there we go, charging in. The French desperately trying to hold there on all sides. Fusilier is pushing in against the French over here as well. We've got more Fusiliers fighting the French on this flank. The Spanish wave charge has definitely pushed the, the French back into the tree line. However, they are still holding. Over here as well, more Fusiliers moving in against the Old Guard. This has allowed my Grenadiers and also my Walloon Guards to actually move around the flank uh, without being harassed by the French gunfire. However, it doesn't look like the Spanish Wave charges worked somehow. The French have managed to hold us back. With such a thin line of Frenchmen, but elite Frenchmen at that. The Spanish morale just could not hold. And now the Portuguese become the dominant power here on this hilltop as all of my French forces break from the battlefield. Oh, or all my Spanish forces, sorry, break from the battlefield. More Portuguese actually breaking, but we did have some canister shot actually firing at the guard seamen there that are pursuing the routing troops down the hilltop. That is definitely a mistake. The boss needs to bring them back, and that is exactly what he is doing. I'm bringing my Fusiliers that have returned from routing back up the hilltop. But as I said, now I've got my best units in position, and I'm pretty much content to uh, just have a prolonged skirmish phase with the French. They're so depleted at this point that I feel just, just having the skirmish phase will be enough to break them. Over here, though, you can see that my light infantry were routed. I wasn't able to catch that because it was at the same time that we had that Spanish wave charge there. But the guard Chassea Chevelle actually moving in and breaking the light infantry. So that has secured the French flank once again. I've sent in my Fusiliers once again into the forest. The howitzers are just exploding overhead, but the French are holding... We do, of course, have the Young Guard, so that's a very elite unit there. The, uh, the Spanish Fusiliers, again, the morale starting to waver. Come on, Fusiliers hold. We've got 30 of the French versus 43 of the Spanish, and there we go, yes! The Fusiliers managed to pull it off and break the Young Guard from the battlefield. Over here as well, you can see the Grenadiers really getting... This one actually is getting pretty caught up. You can see the old guard over here on the flank, and this old guard are doing a number on my elite infantry. But uh, where are my Walloon guard? I think, yeah, my Walloon guard have just arrived, so they should be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the old guard and uh, not suffer too much. And we have to remember as well that the Old Guard are pretty depleted. They're exhausted from the fighting. Actually, no, I lied. They're fresh. <laughs> wow. He managed to actually keep his Old Guard fresh. That is insane. This one is down to 39, though, and this one down to 113. And how are things over here? We've got the Guard Seaman over here, and there we go. It looks like we did have the General killed. So the general staff for the French has been killed on the battlefield. I don't know exactly where the general's bodyguard was. I can't exactly see it. May have been around... Uh, yeah, actually, it was around this area. Okay, so I did manage to get a... Oh, that's actually Portuguese grenadiers managing to get into square formation there. And the guard seamen, seeing that their general has been slain, have routed. That has freed up three depleted units of fusiliers to kind of close the jaws on the French that are in this very tight position. Let's actually zoom in there so we can see. There we go. The Walloon guard fighting against the old guard. I do still think that the old guard look cooler, but uh, my Walloon guard are healthier. And they actually seem to have the hill advantage on the French. 
Come on, man, you can do this. I should have maybe used my Grenadiers to greater effect with their grenades. This unit, I should have moved them forwards. But look at this, out of the trees, we actually have a Portuguese unit of Grenadiers charging in. And I'm not about to let Azrian Fox have all the glory of breaking the old guard, so I'm going to send my Walloon guard and my Grenadiers in as well to fight the old guard in melee. Actually, just as the Portuguese Grenadiers break, we charge in. And that has broken the old guard. And I don't think that he has too much more. I think it's just his artillery pieces, which my Fusiliers are slowly wrapping up. Come on, men. Come on. Destroy the French. And there we go. Also, another unit from behind the light infantry returning and surrounding the position. Once again, DeVos, I love it, fighting to the very last man, actually using canister shot to rip a hole through my Walloon guards. But it's not going to be enough. The Fusilier is just silencing those guns. And the French will be defeated this day. Well done, DeVos, as the defenders, and well done to the Spanish and the Portuguese. There we go. So you can see that DeVos only had 2,000 men, so we more than doubled his force. However, look how many he killed. He actually killed 2,961 of us. So he killed... He killed most, I would say, of Azrian Fox's force. Uh, he only had uh, about four or five hundred men left. And then for me, I only had a thousand. So very well done by DeBoss. Just a small and elite force that, as I said, that we cut off from the main body of Napoleon's army. But they definitely made us pay for that victory. Taking a look at the unit statistics there, not too crazy. I mean, the Fusiliers... Yeah, I didn't keep them in a skirmish phase for too long. I actually charged them in maybe a little bit too early. That was my bad. But the Grenadiers not doing too badly. Uh, the Walloon Guards, uh, from what they saw uh, of the battle, you can see they didn't really lose too much. So they could have gotten more kills if I had used them earlier on. But the Light Infantry surprisingly doing pretty well as well. The Lanceros, definitely to boss MVP there, destroying my cavalry with relative ease. I think the... Uh, Coraceros as well. Yeah, one getting zero kills and this one getting 31. So well done there. I hope you guys enjoyed this battle. It was a very epic one, at least for me. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this in the future. And I will see you in the next one.